you'd work for? I work for John Law. John Law. Yeah, Look, we... explain to me, because this is a public right of way here. This is being bought, mate. This All is this a... land from but there. Where's the sign that says that's that's private? This is this land that's being bought. We don't go to get the deeds. No, I don't need to. I'm just saying, where's the sign? Because this is a public yeah. right, right away. From up the top, mate. Okay. This, this is in sections. This okay. is it's in phase. This that's will fine. be a road. What comes in, mate? Yeah, but there's nothing at the moment. It's not, is it? Well, I'll explain then when the first right. one. No, no. Let me explain to you. Just simple. End of day. No, I'll just tell you something. We're walking from we're walking from John O'Groats. We're walking from John O'Groats to Lands End. Let me just explain to you what we're doing. We're walking from John O'Groats to Lands End. Mm -hmm. That's two thousand kilometres. Okay, and occasionally. When we get caught out, we have to stop, we have to rest, and then we have to get walking again. Yeah, that, that's we don't make a we don't make a mess. We don't leave anything behind. Don't we don't do anything, but we we document everything because yeah, we we talk right. Yeah. Just because I've got to be careful because you're telling me now somebody's had a break in. Now there's yeah, there's been no in. there's been no noise, so I haven't heard anything. You might have asked me, have I heard anything? I haven't heard nothing at You've all. Heard nothing last night. No, nothing at all. So if you th if you've had a break in, I didn't see anything. But if the police want to chat, I'm I'm happy to. I yeah. don't mind I don't mind talking Friends to them. To me, but sure. But there is nothing here to say that this is this is purchased or private land. Actually, there is a sign that says just down there that this is a public right of way. Well, it shouldn't be because there's all this. Well, land. It's, it's a government it sign. Is. This is in a but phase. But it's a government two. sign. That, no, mate. They're all well, this well, land. It's being bought. It's in phases. Well, they have to take. They, they should take the public right of way signs down. Well, that comes onto the part of the canal, isn't it? All this land is being bought, mate. But, okay, all right, but you, it doesn't say it. <laughs> I, I know it doesn't say it because it's okay. in phases. All right, this well, phase just one, to explain to you, sorry, what's your name? I'm, I'm Steve. We walk, Steve. We're just walking Land's End, John Groats. No, we no, stop no, overnight, no we mate. stop we overnight. We don't know. We shoot off and we get walking That's and awesome. we're, we're heading to Stoke. Sorry, man. I, I hope I haven't caused you any sort of concern. Got, they had about 50 grams worth of stuff gone missing, no. mate. Well, you can, see, so we that's have, you can see we haven't got it. I know, I've got a couple of back. But I've sometimes got... you don't know if they've come, put a tent up and just stash the stuff. You know what I mean? We've got a couple of backpacks with some walking yeah. gear. There you are, then. All right, man. And can you trust that you won't blow away? So today we, we camped off of a uh, Cheshire East Council uh, public right-of-way footpath and funny enough a, a guy, nice guy in the end, uh, but he came knocking from a building site at least 300 metres away from where we were saying that uh, it was private land owned to the building company and that we shouldn't really be there and they'd had a break-in and they were calling the police and uh, it was all nonsense, it was all bravado, just trying to get us. And I said to him, well, it can't be private land because the area you're working in is fenced off and it's, you know, it's, it's a long, long way away from us. The area we're on is a designated marked council, marked public right of way. Oh, well, that's a mistake, that shouldn't be there. I said, well, it is, it's, it's even marked on the Ordnance Survey maps as a, a public right of way. Uh, I think he was just trying to, I don't really know why he would come across, maybe just trying to see who we were, be a bit nosy and then try to frighten us off. But, you know, you do have to stand your ground with people because <clears throat> even if the police had come and we'd said, we're walking John O'Groats Land's End, we're just resting here, they wouldn't be bothered. There's nothing they can do, to be honest. Um, what can they do? At the very least, what can they, you're not breaking any rules, no legal, no laws uh, that a criminal that the the um, the police can get involved with whatsoever. At the very most, it's a civil case, in which case nobody's going to bother. So just stand by your ground. Um, his name was Neil. He was all right in the end, but uh, it's part of walking. And we're only about we were only about. Um, 20 feet away from this public footpath as well. Um, there are no laws in England allowing you to camp as there are in Scotland, but you've got to be realistic, right? This land doesn't belong to the government. It, belong, it belongs to the people. And if they want to argue that toss at any great level, they, they can do, you know, they'll lose, but Sure, if you start setting up barbecues and, and, and having a, a big group party in tents on public land, they might uh, question it. 
they may even uh, ask you to move on the police may ask you to move on but again it's a civil it's a civil case it's it's not criminal the police haven't really got any rights um, to stop you so just know know your your place and and be respectful um, so we're just resting resting overnight and we're on again morning horsey oh, good morning isn't that right michelle absolutely absolutely all what he said <laughs> The funny thing is the lad said, you know, they had some some stuff stolen from, I think he said 50 grand. Michelle thought he said 50 pound, but I think, and they called the police about it. And I said, well, you know, we would hardly be be the suspects. And he said, well, you could have taken it and then put it in your tent. <laughs> I thought, well, who's gonna steal 50 grand worth of, of stuff from a building site, then set up a tent next door and hoard it all inside their tent. Ah, oh dear. Anyway, another big walk today, trying to get to Stoke-on-Tent, Trent, Stoke-on-Tent? Stoke-on-Tent, I've got tent on the mine. Stoke-on-Trent. You see here on bridge 75, it's at a sort of uh, an angle, so the brickwork also would be, um, angled across here. Good day. Morning. Good morning. Hey, good day. Oh, All right. All right. What are you up to? Taking it out. Taking it out, are you? Is it, what is that? Is that part of, I mean, this would have been, is, would, no, this is not, oh, that section's older, isn't it? Or? Yeah, it's old mill, basically. Yeah. Uh, Sprinkle protection. Right. We haven't got enough room for a 50,000 gallon tank. Right. Not enough water pressure on the main. Right. So they decided they'll use canal water. Ah. Bottom of there, there's a, there's a, what's left of the pump valve. Right. Basically rubber ring. Yeah. Metal plate. Yeah. Spring. Right. All that water pressure keeps it down, it keeps it sealed. It's five bar of pressure in here. Right. You lose the spring thread from the fire. Yeah. Pump kicks in, away it goes. Right. Because it's sitting in the bottom of the canal. Yeah. Silt, leaves, crayfish. Yeah. Even though it's got a mesh guard around it. It's time to. Is it? You're just changing it out, are you? going to clean it? I've got something stuck in it. I can't prime my system. Right. So you're just going to have to clean, clean it Take through. It out, clean it out, yeah. The whole section, that whole piece of pipe. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good luck with that, man. <laughs> we're we're walking Land's End, John O'Groats. So right. it's nice to just document things along the oh, along right. road. John O'Groats, Land's End, actually. So, uh, interesting, so they, they pinch the water out of the canals for their sprinkler system. So interesting, the gentleman said that pipe that you could see there goes down into the canal and has a, a like a bung head and a spring on it, uh, just the right pressure um, to feed water up uh, into their sprinkler system. And they did it to, I don't know, it was an ec economical reason. But of course, what happens is over time, stuff gets caught um in that pipe work and then he has to he can't backwash it through so he has to get out again all right so he has to completely remove that bottom section of pipe and clean it through and reconnect it that'll be a really dirty job now the sign on the wall there said chippies bakers butchers that's a list of the shops that are inside the small town um the business himself, they're actually an animal feed centre, so good day. Good day. So they mix and make an organic uh, animal feed. So that's his business. So we cross over for the second time in two bridges onto the other side of the canal. Down these sort of cobbles which can get slippery with the autumn leaves. But I'd be quite happy to stay this side of the canal. Potentially this is the sunny side of the canal today. If the sun comes out, that is. You look at this woodland here. It's proper old school woods. 
There are trees down there, you can't see them now over the other side of the stream with big ropes hanging off them. The perfect place for kids to play. And dogs to walk by the looks of it. There's the dog walker. 20 pound an hour, each dog. <laughs> Raking it in. It's good money in dog walking. So we've just stepped off the canal. It's a little um, swing bridge here. A lovely little house here. Um, Roy and Audrey, lovely couple, offered us a cup of tea and coffee. It's very sweet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you must write a book after, wouldn't you? Well, we may do. We, we, yeah, we, yeah, we make yeah. little diary notes of everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's idea. So, anyway. So that's Roy's, Roy, was that from where you worked, Roy, was yeah, it? Yeah, Longer Weir. Made planes and excavators. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Mr. Ruston was English and Mr. Bucharest was American. Right, right. And we got together in the 30s to make excavators and cranes. Okay, and where was that, down in Lincoln? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah. Roy and Audrey, by the way, lovely couple that we've met alongside the canal path here on the um, um, Macclesfield. Macclesfield Canal. And they've got a beautiful collection of teapots and stories. And uh, they've made us a beautiful cup of tea as well. I heard that, Audrey. Thank you very much. Oh, this must be their um, boat. Oh, yes. Rosie of Lincoln. What an absolute adorable couple. Um, that's Audrey and Roy, who uh, they're they're Christians, devout Christians, devout Christians, and they they've got their. Um, Beautiful little cottage there on the edge of the canal where they invite people in for tea, free of free, just come in, have tea and biscuits. And it's their way of giving back to people, but they receive, I think, so much joy from the people they meet. And we've received so much joy from meeting them. Best tea I've had uh, in England already. I mean, lovely, fresh leaf tea. Michelle had a cup of coffee, which was I, great. Yes, it was a lovely, lovely couple. Great stories. It was just great. Such good stories. Uh, could have sat there all day and chatted <laughs> with them, but um, we're the first people they've had in through the gate since this uh, this COVID business started, but they just wanted to invite us in, and we're, we're pleased uh, that they did so, and we know we put them at no risk. So, um, yeah, a highlight of the walk one of the many highlights. And you will have seen, they had a, a huge collection of teapots. Uh, Roy was quite proud to get his tea urn from his company where he worked before and show us also a beautiful local uh, teapot that was made that would hold 12 cups of tea. Uh, was it 12 or 24? No, 12. 12. Uh, big teapot. I tell you, it's been a great experience. Uh, really recharged our batteries. Uh, we do need to have um, a lunch break still uh, though that was re refreshing we think there's a lock uh, a mile or so up the road and we'll probably sit and uh, have our pasties that we bought along but that was a highlight Michelle it was very good was really good fortuitous that you asked them when but there was a lock further up and then they filled our water and it went from there filled our water without you know any question at all and then uh, on top of that Please come in, please come in, have tea with us. And like I can say the only the only downside to the whole thing was that we had to leave so soon because we can't really sit all day uh, nattering, even though we'd we'd actually love to. So we're guessing this is the junction that people have talked about. This sort of uh, well junction of sorts. There's a river down here. There's an end of canal just there, it looks to end, and a sharp left turn here. As far as we can tell, okay, more locks down there. This is uh, the changeover from the 
Macclesfield Canal to the um, Trent and the Mersey, maybe. So there are two here, what do we do? We've got to work out which one we're meant to be on. Have a little look just around this corner. So it must split. I can have a look at the map, it'd be easier. So yeah, we've uh, we've worked out on the map that we need to come down this little alley. They do join together, so you could go either way, but this is the Trent and Mersey Canal down here. Wow, what brown, murky looking water. I'm guessing so, 42 locks. Real murky looking and actually this lock's all barred up like it's not working. Well, this looks like a section of canal that's not overly cared for. <laughs> You're right, Michelle, good camping spot, but I'm not sure, don't know, in the middle there. Oh, it's work. I think that side is working. Ah, oh, yes, I didn't notice that. I think that. half is working. Oh, yes. Is the usual weir. I don't know why the water is so cloudy. I suspect it's something to do with the, the sediment here. But anyway, we're now on the Trent and Merseyside Canal, um, which is going to abruptly vanish into a dark tunnel and under a hill, which we can't navigate because it's one of the old canal tunnels that years gone by would have, the, um, the ponies that pulled the canal boats would have had to go over the hill and the men, I think it's about a, a two mile long or at least a mile and a half of tunnel. And then the men and women, they would have to lay on the barges and kick their feet against the inside of the tunnel to push the barge down through the canal tunnel. Now we can't go through it, so we have to go up and over like the old cob ponies used to. But this is some dirty water, mucky brown water. And this um, is apparently from the iron ore that's in the soil around here. That so looks, the water looks like a big rusty bath. And I thought maybe it was just being churned up by traffic. But it, it's like this all the time, at least this section is. Pretty horrible looking in a way. I mean, it's, it is what it is, but if it's like that all year round, you just think, oh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to jump into it, would you? So we're here already. This apparently is Hardcastle Tunnel. And I thought it was going to be a good 20, 30, 40 minutes walk. We've only done about 10 minutes. And this tunnel is the one that you cannot walk down. It's got no footpath. Oh. Preston, 30 miles. Shardlow, 62. There it is. The famous Hardcastle Tunnel. The Hardcastle Newcastle Underline Civic Society. 2,880 yards long by three yards, 2.6 miles, meters wide. We wouldn't have been able to get a lift, wouldn't we? There's, there was two tunnels at one time, maybe. Because the tunnel there it is, look, oh, there's a smell coming out of there. It seems almost as if it might be closed, but I suspect it's not. Can you imagine? God. How grim that would be. Let's have a look up there. Oh, that would be a pretty horrible tunnel to, to go through, Michelle dark but we're here at Hardcastle Tunnel already and uh, stop here. Thomas, Thomas Telford. Telford surveyed and enge engineered by Thomas Telford and this is cool this is like a canal side shop 
selling gas. So you got the you got the coal, you got the gas, you got everything. Diesel, oil.